The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit exalts in God my Savior. Because he has looked upon his lowly handmaid, yes, from this day forth all generations will call me blessed. The mighty has done great things to me, holy is his name, and his mercy reaches far from age to age to those who fear him. He has shown the power of his arm, he has routed the proud of heart, he has pulled down the mighty from the thrones and exalted the lowly. Hungry has filled with good things, the rich has sent empty away. He has come to help of his Israel his servant, and mindful of his mercy. According to the promise he made for our ancestors, of his mercy to Abraham, the descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the Annunciation scene, Angel Gabriel appeared to Mary. Angel said to Mary, Nothing is impossible to God. Mary responds, I'm handmaid of the Lord, and what you said be done to me. Just need to reflect on those words, nothing is impossible for God. And we could look and reflect on the first reading from Samuel with Hannah. Hannah went before the God in the temple and prayed and prayed for months, for years. But God removed the barrenness from her life, the shame from her life. She felt as though it was impossible that God could do anything for her. She felt that all the embarrassment that she, that she has experienced, all that she experienced in her life, God could not take it from her. But God is a God of impossible. And God took it away from Hannah. He gave her son Samuel. And the account of that, prior to that, when she went, was in the temple, Eli spoke to her and told her, why are you coming here drunk? Why are you coming here talking like this? She said, I'm not talk drunk. I'm coming to pray to my God for her son. God gave her a son. And she gave that son back to God. As the said, she weaned him and gave him back to God. We see the possibleness of our God. From Old Testament all through the New Testament, God is a God of the possible. He does these awesome things for us. He led the people out to the desert. He let them cross the Red Sea. He did all these different things, all these impossible things God has done. And God will continue doing for each and every one of us. In our gospel today, the Annunciation when the angels told to Mary, because Elizabeth has conceived and born a son and will bear a son. Mary, Elizabeth was barren. Barren for years. She's in her old age conceived and gave birth to a son. Isaac of the promise, his mother Sarah was barren for many years. So you see a God, a God of impossible throughout all our salvation history. From the Old Testament into the New Testament, this God has worked. This God has worked and done these awesome things for us. But to see the power of God is there for us. And this gospel today, Mary proclaims the greatness of our Lord. She has seen the possibleness of our God because she's a young maiden, a virgin, how she can conceive and bear a son. The angel told her, the power from a high would have overcome you, and you conceive and bear a son. You'd be called, God is with us. And the count to say, Emmanuel, God is with us. So Mary just responded, I'm the handmaid of the Lord. Submitting her will to God's will. Entering into that poverty of spirit, the poverty of spirit and recognizing that this is God's work. This is God's work for me. I have to be poor in spirit to surrender all that I do to God. Because God has a plan, a greater plan for us. God had a plan for Mary, because you know he chose her from the beginning of time, to conceive and bring forth a son, Jesus, Emmanuel, God is with us. He will bring salvation to the world. He has brought it already, so we are now preparing ourselves to enter in that salvation that God has prepared for us. Our whole life is a life preparing for the salvation that God has prepared for each and every one of us. And Mary continues rejoicing in the presence. It says, God has done marvels for me. Holy is his name. She recognized that God has done a great thing in her life by calling her to be the mother of the Savior, the mother of Christ, the Theotokos, the woman who gave birth to the Son. He called her to be that. She recognized the greatness of God. She's seen the possibleness of God, that God has chosen her, a woman, to be the mother of a Savior, woman of all women, woman chosen before all time, Mary, the mother of God. And then she goes on not to only look at herself. She says, he has pulled down the mighty from the throne. She's raised up the lowly. He's filled the staff with his good things. He's provided food for all in need. Mary just not recognizes what God has done for her, but recognizes what God has done for others. As she proclaims that Magnificat, which is actually the prayer of Hannah, and Hannah proclaimed that prayer, Mary echoes the prayer of Hannah as she gives the Magnificat. My soul glorifies the Lord. I give thanks to God. I rejoice in God's presence. God has done this for me. 
That's all we have to be in our lives. Rejoice in God's presence. Rejoice that God is doing this for me. God does these great things for me. He does wonders for me. Let us recognize what God is doing in our lives. Let's recognize that God is doing this in our world, our nation. You always have to make reference to the time in which our whole world lives. It is COVID time. God is doing something in our lives. God is bringing us closer to him as we see the power of God. Not the power of man, not even the power of the vaccine, but the power of God. We have to trust in the power of God and say, God could do this for us. He is the God of the impossible. He can bring what everything that God wants. So as we reflect today, as we go through our last couple of days of our advanced season, we recognize the impossibleness of God. That God could do anything. God chose a woman to be the mother of his son. God let his son come into the world, born of a woman, to bring forth salvation. God is a God who has a plan, a great, big, awesome plan. And we stop to stop and think and ask ourselves, who is this God? Who really is this God? Who is this God of salvation, this God of life, this God who has done this for me, this God who has given me his only begotten son, this God who loves me, who loves you, who loves all of us, all of us who join us in this broadcast, God loves you. Recognize that as you go through whatever difficulty you might experience. This God is with us. This is a God of the impossible. Let us be like Mary. Respond to him. I'm the servant of the Lord. I'm the handmaid of the Lord. I'm the servant of the Lord. And what he said, be done unto me. Whatever thing seems so impossible, God could do it for you. Let us today remove all our fears, our anxieties, our doubts. Offer them to God. Say, God, you're the God of impossible. You can do it for me. I trust in you. I surrender to you. I'm poor in spirit. I depend upon you. And you do it for me. Amen.